Hey, it's Dewan Thomas, and you're watching Dewan Thomas Live, the live show that's pre recorded. Stay tuned, we got a great episode for you today. Hey, it's Dewan Thomas, and I want to welcome you back to the show. It's awesome to be back in the studio to bring y'all some new episodes. And starting off, I've been on some adventures lately. Um, I started doing more acting on a professional scale, and it's been awesome. It's been an adventure. Um, starting off, I started with uh, doing background extra work for a movie. Um, it's Queen of the Ring. I can't talk too much about it because it's still in production, but that was an awesome experience, like just stepping out there and doing something I've never done before. Because growing up, you know, I've done this show. I've done little plays in church and things like that, but never something on such a grand scale. And other than in the past, I worked for America's Got Talent and I've worked for uh, A&E Channel and done stuff for them. But being an actor has been so different and fun. You know, I like being behind the camera, but being in front of it is just as much fun. And a little bit and hopefully some pictures will be showing. Um, I've done MTV VMAs. That was awesome. I don't know if any of y'all know Steven Sanchez, but he's a rising artist. He kind of gives me the vibe of uh, Elvis Presley. So that's been pretty cool working with him um, and being on MTV. Like I grew up watching MTV and now I'm, I got a little cameo and I was in a commercial that's going to be airing nationally, an ad campaign that's going to be all over social media for Visit Oxford. And that experience, that was like eye opening because I've worked with, um, I guess, some some bad uh I don't know how to say it, but people that weren't that good at their job when it comes to production, like they just treated us bad. But this crew at Madden Media, they were awesome. They made us feel so special and it was just a fun experience. And then lastly, well, two more things actually. Tyler Hubbard, I forgot about that. I was in a music video as a featured talent. He's an up and coming awesome country music artist and I got to meet him, hang out with him. Um, he even dabbed me up in the music video. It's not out yet, I don't think, but that was awesome. That was a cool experience. And then lastly, one of my best gigs I've gotten so far, I was cast into a TV pilot as a speaking role. Now, for those of you who may not know, you know, background extra work is fun and something and all that, but getting a speaking role like that's that's moving up there. And I can only thank God for that. He's really blessed me on this journey. And that that show, it's called Meatheads. And man, if y'all seen Workaholics, think of Workaholics meets Office meets Gym Bros. I don't know. It's it was fun. It was a lot of fun to work with. And it's just been an awesome experience. And for anybody out there that may want to get into acting, just a bit of advice, Facebook groups. I never knew this. I learned about it a few months ago. Facebook groups. Look up casting wherever you're from, Kentucky casting, Tennessee casting, because I was surprised to find out there's so much stuff filmed in Nashville, like, and Louisville as well. They're both becoming hubs for the film world. So make sure y'all check that out if y'all are interested in having an acting career. But moving on for me, I have a very special guest today, somebody that is a staple in Paducah, and that is none other than Mr. Michael Cochran. Thank you so much for being on the show, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, sir. And we're going to move away from like the TV world for a little bit and get into, you know, some theater arts, the backbone of the industry right okay. there. So <laughs> starting off, for those that may not know him, he is the executive director of Market House Theater, which has um, just celebrated their 60th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And that is awesome. You know, 60 years here in Paducah. That is an accolade right there. So for those that may not know you, I guess, tell a little bit um, about who you are and your role. Well, uh, the theater was founded in 1963, and it was uh, a group of local citizens, the Civic Beautification Board, wanted to keep the Market House building from being torn down to make a parking lot. Wow. <laughs> so they went to a group of people and they said, hey, would you create a cultural place and a little theater is what they called it um, in this as part of the building. So the group was formed, the Market House Theater was formed on October 14th, 1963, wow. had the first meeting of it. And for the first 20 years, it did about four to five plays in the theater. I came on the 20th anniversary in 1983. Uh, so this year is 40 years for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd be here too. Oh, wow. Um, and I came from professional theater. I'd been working in Kansas City, done some film things in Los Angeles and done theater in Chicago, uh, but was looking for a community of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so came to Paducah and started out as the technical director. So I was the costume scenic and lighting designer and the builder of the sets, but I had directed shows and I'd worked for Six Flags and done um, theater supervisor roles. And so I had the administrative, the technical and the artistic background. And then uh, two years after I came here, 
Um, I, mar I married my wife two weeks after I took the job oh, here. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we both have this 40th anniversary thing in this month. Wow. Um, she was then hired as the executive director of the theater, and that's what kept us here, yeah. is she took over that, and then she did that for 10 years, and after that, I took over. Wow. So I've been doing it for a while now, yeah. um, and she has become the education director, because her right. passion was always kids. Right. So... Uh, the theater has grown so much since that first time I came to Paducah and I looked at that building and I thought, where did they put a theater in this building? <laughs> Is it like sideways? Yeah. Is it, how does it fit in this building? But one of the successes of Market House Theater is that it's an intimate theater. So we have 200 seats, the audience is up close and personal, and we realized that was a strength. The Carson Center across the street has 1,800 seats, and they do big spectacle shows, and they're wonderful to watch with all of the scenery and the effects and everything else. We do plays that are about stories, mm -hmm. about people, and the audience feels like they're sitting right in the scene with the people there. Yeah. So, And we've discovered that that is a secret for young actors, for amateur actors to be successful when they don't have to fill a big, huge, 80-foot-wide stage right. with their presence, they can fill a 24-foot-wide stage yeah. with what they're doing, and the audience is up close. So we've had a lot of success with that. Yeah. We now have 11 buildings we operate out of, um, a campus of buildings downtown. We have done the largest um, historic preservation project in Paducah's history for um, creative economy, creative cities. Um, so. The theater has grown a lot. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's a whole big yeah. thing. <laughs> hey, well, 60 years is a lot to encompass in just a little dialogue. But about yourself, so you're not from Paducah originally. So what led you here? Was it Market House or? Well, like I said, I'm from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah. So I grew up between Chicago and Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, big city kind of person. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought I'd live in a small town. Yeah. <laughs> um, then went to work in Kansas City. Uh, had gone to graduate school at the University of Alabama and went to Kansas City and worked professionally there for two theaters that did a lot of, they were dinner theaters, and we had a lot of TV stars and film stars were the talent for it. Yeah. And it was uh, um, something that was really high stress, yeah. um, a lot going on, big budgets, but I was really looking for something that was a little bit more, I wanted to be in a place where I could work with everyday people right. that were um, looking to do something creative. Yeah. And so it was a good mix for me to come to Paducah. And uh, you know, I, I had driven through Paducah to go to Atlanta to a job yeah. conference. Yeah. And when I got all the way back to Kansas City, then the market house called me and said, hey, can you yeah. come back to Paducah <laughs> and interview? So I did, and the rest is history. Wow, that's awesome. And you know, you, you tapped into it a little bit. So market house, they have educational programming in four states, over 14 countries, 41 schools, and almost 1,300 classes and workshops, over 53,000 students. Like, how has, or how has it, you know, what has it taken to build it to such a scale like that? Well, you know, it takes a lot of passion. And April, my wife, was the education director for over 30 years. And she, you know, we both believe that theater is a teaching tool. So we try to teach the fundamentals of how to communicate. Mm -hmm. We try to teach you how to express emotion, how to have confidence to stand up in front of people. Yeah. Those are life skills. And we take theater into classrooms in the 13 counties that we're in, and we, the kids think we're playing games. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, man, the drama lady's here. Let's play a game. Because we use games to teach them these life skills. So it's not like we're coming into schools and we're helping them put on plays. We're teaching them life skills, and then they can go out in the world and be successful in anything they want. Right. We've had some people who have gone on to professional careers. They're on Broadway. Um, they're in film, directors of film, and done all that from Market House Theater. But really, we're about building up that creative potential in the people in this community. And that's been the secret of a lot of what we do. I would say over 50% of what we do is education. And people don't, they think everything we do is on that stage. And I'm like, oh no, there's so much more that goes on beyond the stage. That's just the icing on the cake. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And your motto is change lives through theater. So how has um, changing so many lives impacted you or enhanced your life? Well, you know, I. I've had opportunities from other places through my career. 
And I think the thing that I've found the most important is when you find a community of people who support you, that's really hard to find. Right. People who um, want to support your vision and give you opportunities to create that you don't find every place else. And that has kind of changed me. And the Paducah is such a unique place because for a city this size to have all of the cultural things that it has, yeah. you're like, what's in the water here? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the talent. And I always believe that if you give people professional support, you give them professional directors, designers, sets, costumes, that local people can do amazing things if you give them the support. Definitely. And for those out there that may want to have a career in theater arts, like what are some avenues they can take to get their career started? Well, you can come to Market House yeah. Theater. <laughs> um, and we, we do a lot of teaching while we're doing productions, but uh, for kids especially, it's the drama classes. Mm -hmm. We have dance classes, we have theater acting classes, we have, um, we work with Harmony Road is in one of our buildings, and there are music classes there. So all the arts are kind of represented, the performing arts are represented at the theater campus. And I would say it's just a matter of get involved. We have mm -hmm. people who, about every show we do, I would say, about a quarter of the people have never done the theater before, or it was they did it in high school, they did it in grade school, they did it in a church play, yeah. they did something, but they've never done it before, and it's on their bucket list. They want to do this. Yeah. So that's what we give people opportunities for. Definitely, and my mind went to this. So, you know, with the film industry and television industry, how can you compare that to theater arts, like, or contrast it, compare or contrast it? The theater is, uh, most of your film actors and television actors, eat, even they start out, a lot of them start out in theater. Mm -hmm. And theater is a love that you have because you have an audience there who gives you an immediate reaction to that. They're a part of that creative process. Mm -hmm. Whereas, as you know, doing film, you take multiple takes yeah. <laughs> from multiple angles, you yeah. do all this stuff, they edit it all together, and then you're kind of like, I'm interested to see what it turns out to yeah. be. But in theater, you get to from go from A to Z in that performance yeah. and build that character and get that audience response and there's nothing like it. Yeah. Most of the theater actors will end up going to television or film because there's a lot more money in that. Right, right. But theater is always their love. Yeah. And for me personally, like I just that's what I love about the film industry because th those takes, you know, it's so much easier and it's a lot of pressure taken off of you cuz doing theater, I know it's probably a lot harder. That's why I can't knock, you know, people that do theater cuz it takes a lot of talent to be able to remember all your lines and just go through the show. And then a question somebody had given me that I thought was really interesting is, um, live theater includes a period of rehearsal. Is life rehearsable? Yeah, and actually, we've had a lot of young students who are on the autism spectrum, oh, wow. and life is scary to them. Yeah. So going into an unknown situation, and in classes, you get to rehearse life situations. Mm. So it's actually a rehearsal for what they experience in life. And we've had so many kids who have done um, great things, gone on to you know careers in many different areas, who credit the Market House Theater and that ability to rehearse life to give them a sense of confidence about what they do. Definitely. And I could tell that you really have a passion about theater arts and everything. So looking back as a child, is there anything that you feel may have led you to theater arts? Um, I started out in a band Oh yeah. <laughs> in, in high school. I, I was into music, yeah. uh, did that, and then uh, had a lot of great music experiences. But I wanted to always kind of put together, I'm going to give my age away a little bit, <laughs> because in the 70s, oh, yeah. when I was in a band, um, there were a lot of new uh, rock and roll bands that were doing some concert things. Pink Floyd was really hot and doing a lot of theatrical things with their concerts. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to create this whole environment with music and with actors and with everything else and put that together. And that's what turned me towards the theater part of the career to be more of a producer and more of a creator of content as opposed to a performer. Right, right. So you've done it all, basically. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> and uh, with keeping one of your original plays in mind, Eternity, like growing up, I've always uh, been inspired by Tyler Perry and you know his story of living in his car and writing the Medea movies and plays or whatnot. And 
What has that process been like? Well, I'm still yeah. writing plays. <laughs> um, it's, it takes me about a year to wow. finally get through the multiple drafts that become the play. Um, I've, I was fortunate enough to have Eternity, which I wrote, I submitted it to the National New Play Competition, mm -hmm. uh, and it was selected as one of the winners for yeah. it. Yeah. And then it was published by Dramatic Publishing. So I got to go to the world premiere of it, because that was part of the process of that, and it's been produced all over the country now. Yeah. Um, it is, it's kind of, for me, I started out creating sets and doing lights and sound and then I wanted to go into the direction part of it and then I wanted to produce things and yeah. finally I said you know what I want to write something I want to create the entire world and that is uh, if you've got someone who is a good editor mm. it's a blessing yeah. <laughs> because they they help you look at your work from an outside point of view mm. and I've learned so much about writing and about the written word, I've always been um, very much into script analysis of trying to figure out why the writer used that particular sentence. And I've learned that writers struggle to find the right word for that particular sentence to give it the most mm -hmm. impact or the to create a flow with how the dialogue goes back and forth. And actors would always go, well, if I don't get it exactly right, yeah. why is that important? And I was like, because the writer's got this wonderful <laughs> pattern of repetition in here, and yeah. if you just paraphrase this, it doesn't have that pattern. Right. So it helps me as a director, mm -hmm. um, and as a writer, I would say the hardest thing is sitting down because everything's been written before. There's no new subjects, uh -huh. but your take on a subject is always gonna be unique because it's you trying to write through this experience and not trying to rewrite what somebody's already done but taking it in a new way so that blank piece of paper is really daunting at times yeah. and you just have to start the process just write it and you know it's going to be awful yeah. get it out on paper and then you can begin to come back and you know edit it and form it and I've written whole scenes that I've thrown away because oh, I went wow. well nope, that's not where the play wants to go. And sometimes I'm surprised. I'll be writing something and go, oh, we're going to go this direction. Okay, well, yeah. we'll head off in this direction. Yeah. So it's, it's an adventure for me. Definitely. And that made me think of something. Um, when you are casting for a play or something like that, what is something that you look for in a talent? Like, what is that it factor that really jumps out to you? You know, I think everybody can do a part at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and when we have an audition, it feels very competitive mm -hmm. because people are like, I want to get this part. Oh, I got to beat everybody else out for this part. And as a director, I want everybody to get the part. Yeah. I'm, what is so hard is that you're trying to put people together mm -hmm. into combinations. And uh, I just talked with uh, McKinley Abraham, mm -hmm. who's in the Broadway show Shucked, and she was telling the story to a master class of kids that she auditioned for about three years for the national tour of Beautiful, and she didn't get cast, mm. and they kept calling her back, and she finally got cast, and it wasn't until that final time she got cast, she learned that all the women had to be the same height, and she uh, was tall. Oh, wow. <laughs> so she didn't get cast because she yeah. was tall. It had nothing to do with talent. Yeah. And a lot of times, what you're looking for is how the people work together, what combination of people will be best for that story. Mm -hmm. So I go into it wide open going, mm -hmm. okay, Who's, who can I put together into these parts? But you're looking for a spark, yeah. something that is somebody who is natural mm -hmm. or has that ability to give you something that connects with an audience. Definitely. And my last couple questions for you, um, we spoke about how Market House has these educational programs. How does somebody get enrolled into that? You can uh, go on our website. Uh, there's a way to register for classes. You can call the theater. Mm -hmm. We have fall classes. We usually do most of our classes during the school year. So mm -hmm. there's a fall semester and a winter spring semester. Mm -hmm. Right now we're about to take um, registrations for the spring winter semester. So they'll start in January. And we have scholarships so nobody is turned away. Right. So th it's open to everybody. And that's the easiest way for kids to get involved. We have on our website, we have auditions for every show. They're open to anybody in the community. Yeah. You can check out a script ahead of time, get familiar with it, come on down, 
breed. We're always looking for new talent. Definitely. And my last question for you, because I asked about advice for like those that want to get into acting, but what about those that want to work in the background? Because there's a lot of roles that you know come into play to make these things happen. So what advice could you give to somebody that wants to be a producer or a director or a stagehand or any role like that? You know, I people follow their passion. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of kids who come out through our program and they go, I want to be an actor. I want to be a professional right. actor. And I always say, you know, follow your passion, but 99.5% of professional actors are unemployed. Oh, wow. What's your other job going to be yeah. that supports you? But there are a lot of jobs in the theater industry and in the entertainment industry that are support, that are technical jobs, that are stage managers or directors or lighting designers, all kinds of support roles for that, which can give you a fulfilling career in that and be in the arts and let you be creative that aren't acting in a show. And sometimes just stage managing, being an assistant director, a lot of times we have people who can't, who have a conflict for a rehearsal. It's kind of like, okay, assistant director, step in, mm -hmm. read that part. And then the director sees you and you go, oh, well, I'll consider them for something in the future. Mm -hmm. Do anything and everything yeah. that, that is associated with it and you'll be amazed because you need to make those connections. People need to know who you are, yeah. because it's really hard if you don't know somebody and you see them for a short time, it's like, well, I don't know, can they do this part? Yeah. But if they know you, it's kind of, it's easier to make that connection go, yeah, I've seen them do other stuff for, before. Yeah. And last thought that came to my mind, because I met Bill Murray, I don't know if you've seen that video years and years ago, and I was wanting to start acting. I was still in high school and I had little acting cards and I gave them some, you know, in the hopes that, oh, I'll be in a next Ghostbusters mm -hmm. movie or something, but what, and I never got a call back, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, what can somebody do just to stick out? If they got that 10 second elevator speech, what can they do to stick out? You know, I, I think the key for it, and McKinley Abraham said it so well in her master class, when you walk into an audition, do something that you're proud of. Do something that makes you feel good, whether you get the part or not. Yeah. Because that confidence level, that ability shows through and you have no control over whether or not somebody's gonna cast you, you're gonna get this opportunity or that opportunity, but if you do what makes you proud of what you've done, you've succeeded. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> well, man, I appreciate your time on the show. This has been very informative. Like, I'm even soaking in stuff right now, so I hope the viewers out there take this in, because this has been some great information. And before we close out the show, we got an alumni of Market House Theater that's gonna close us out with a musical number, so let's move on to that.
everybody make sure y'all check him out 777 Jalen on all social media platforms he's going to be at barbecue on the river he's been at local licks he's been all over you can catch him on social media look out for his next performance thank you Jalen thank you Good to see you man okay. <laughs> and shout out to Jalen Harris for coming on and doing that for us thank you so much again for coming on to the show and we'll see you next time on Dewan Thomas Live mm -hmm.